Hi friends, Dr. Marta Perez here. Welcome back to my channel where we're learning everything about pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, postpartum, and more. Today's episode is going to be about immunity and breastfeeding. Quick note before we start, breastfeeding is a great way to feed an infant but so is formula. If you want more information on breastfeeding versus formula feeding, please head to my breastfeeding live that I did. I'll link that right above me. Sometimes topics around how you feed your infant can be filled with pressure and shame, and that's not what this is about at all. This is simply a factual video about breastfeeding and immunity. Some people are not physically able to breastfeed and some choose not to, and that is okay. So stay tuned if you'd like to, but if you find it triggering and uncomfortable when people talk about breastfeeding, Please don't feel any pressure to watch. With that said, let's get started. There are immune benefits to breastfeeding, but how and why? So if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that there are immune benefits during pregnancy where a mother passes antibodies on to the fetus via the bloodstream that goes through the placenta and into the baby. Those antibodies are called IgG antibodies and they last for up to months in a baby's bloodstream. That's why it's really important to give vaccines that are approved for pregnancy in pregnancy because those antibodies are in the bloodstream of fetuses and babies and they last for a long time, months and months. So that's why we recommend the flu vaccine and Tdap during pregnancy. When we switch over to talk about the immunity of breastfeeding, there's a less important role. Now it's still there, but it is gonna be less important and less powerful than some of the antibodies that are secreted into the bloodstream. And the immunity is just different. In infants that are exclusively breastfed for six months or more, compared to infants that are breastfed for four months or less, there's a 20% decrease in lower respiratory tract infections. That's like lung infections. So that decrease is about 20%. Babies who are breastfed will still have respiratory infections. There's also a decrease in breastfed infants in the amount of ear infections, and that decreases about 30%. Most of these protections are in these first few months of life when a baby is entirely dependent on what they're drinking, whether that be breast milk or supplementation with formula. But there are some benefits that actually exist even past when children are primarily eating breast milk into the second half of the first year of life and maybe even a little bit further, but they're not quite as powerful. So we see this decrease in infections. We also see a decrease in babies eating breast milk in GI infections. And for premature babies or babies at risk of something called NEC, NEC or necrotizing enterocolitis, breast milk is really important at preventing that. So that's why NICU babies will often get breast milk or donated breast milk to protect their guts. In term healthy babies, breast milk can decrease uh, the risk of diar diarrheal illnesses and gastroenteritis by a little bit. That effect is much more powerful in developing nations where there's not always a clean water supply and more water contamination. It has less an effect in countries where that have a clean water supply because that formula mixed with water is less at risk to cause GI distress, but we do see some benefits there. So how does breastfeeding work to provide immunity? So breast milk itself is actually a living substance. It contains important proteins, enzymes, sugars, et cetera, but it also contains active white blood cells that help fight infection when they're transferred over. It contains active enzymes that can help break down other types of sugars, and it can send over different substances that are coating the gut of babies and helping them defend and mature the gut. It's like a prebiotic, kind of like a probiotic, a prebiotic, so it's good for the bacteria in the gut to foster a really healthy microbiome. The important thing when we talk about protecting babies from infections also is that a specific type of antibody is able to coat both the respiratory passages and the GI passage, and that's called secretory IgA. So when you've watched my other videos, you know that IgG is transferred from maternal bloodstream to fetal bloodstream and stays for months. IgM is in the maternal bloodstream, but typically does not cross into the fetal bloodstream. And IgA is present in breast milk, and that basically coats the mucus passages of the baby. It's not thought that IgA is really systemically absorbed into the bloodstream. And though there is IgG present in breast milk, it's not thought that 
meaningful amounts of IgG pass into that fetal circulation, and it's unknown if IgG can help on those mucous membranes. What we're really talking about is that IgA. I get tons of questions about protecting babies from COVID-19 through breastfeeding. And so let's back up and talk about a few different things related to COVID-19 and infants. There appears to be less severe disease in young children when they have COVID-19 positive. There are lower rates of MISC in younger like babies and infants than there are in older children. They appear to be just a little bit less susceptible to severe disease. However, protection is a good thing. We all want protection. I definitely don't want to downplay the risks of COVID-19. Question one, can I protect my baby from COVID-19 by breastfeeding? The answer, of course, based on data is we don't truly know. We don't have rates of infection or rates of positivity in infants through mothers who have either had COVID or had the COVID vaccine, but we do have some clues. And the clues are that we've seen that women who have tested positive for COVID-19 do have both IgG and some secretory IgA against COVID-19. So again, I don't know that IgG does a lot for babies. There's not great data on that, but IgA can. And since COVID-19 is a respiratory virus, it may help fight those effects if that secretory IgA is in the airway. The studies I did find about actually having COVID in pregnancy and what happens in the breast milk are twofold. One, I found a case report. A case report is not great data, but it gives us a clue. And it found that a woman who had COVID-19 during her pregnancy did have both IgG and secretory IgA against COVID in her breast milk. The baby had some IgG in its serum, but again, it probably received that through the placenta since the infection was during pregnancy than it did through the breast milk. There was another study at Mount Sinai of breast milk samples of women, 16 women in the study who had had COVID-19. They did find secretory IgA against COVID in the breast milk samples. So again, we have minimal amounts of data showing that if you have COVID, some of that secretory IgA is present. Question two, if I receive the vaccine for COVID-19 while breastfeeding, Will that help protect my baby? We don't yet have data on the antibodies that are in breast milk from the COVID-19 vaccine, although studies are ongoing. I'm gonna put them in the show notes right now of the studies I know of, but there are different studies coming up and many people send them to me. I keep an updated list of all the studies related to COVID pregnancy and breastfeeding in my Instagram highlight, so called studies to join. So head over there if you are if you want an updated list. I actually just joined a study about breast milk and the COVID-19 vaccine and I gave samples of breast milk to be analyzed. So we hope to have an answer about the presence or absence of secretory IgA and when they can expect to be there but I'm not sure if we'll have data about the degree of protectiveness via the baby. However, I definitely think it's really promising that we have a vaccine that avoids serious illness in people who are breastfeeding and possibly confers some immunity to babies as well. Remember, it's really not good for breastfeeding and it's really not good for infant health if a new parent is gravely ill from COVID. So that's another advantage of the vaccine is that the parent and caregiver is not gravely ill. I wanna emphasize that the vaccine is better at creating an immune response than having COVID is. So it's not better for your immune system to have had the infection. The vaccine is actually more efficient and better at producing an immune response. Will other older children that someone might have benefit from drinking breast milk in order to get protection with COVID antibodies from someone who's either had COVID or had the COVID vaccine? The answer to this is that we don't know. We know that that sec secretory IgA helps babies by coating their mucous membranes, but we don't know if it confers the same amount of protection. And again, that protection was about 20 to 30% from respiratory and ear infections up above. We don't know if that same protection applies to older children. If you think about little babies, they're getting around the clock nutrition from breast milk. It's their only source of nutrition. Giving a few ounces at a time to an older child, I don't know if it would confer the same amount. Additionally, we don't know if the more mature mucous membranes on older children confers the same type of receptiveness to that secretory IgA. It could just wash through. So we really don't have data to say whether or not older children can benefit from having protection via breast milk. I would leave that up to the personal discretion of the person, but we just I just don't have any data to tell you either way. Should I 
wait to wean my child until I can get the vaccine so that I can pass immunity onto my child? The answer to that is that it's a very personal decision about weaning and what is best for you and your family. Again, until we have better data about the degree of protection offered from an infant that is eating some breast milk, but also eating other foods, other sources of nutrition, etc. We really can't say what degree of protection it is. All right, this has been really fun. I really hope I answered some of the really common questions that I've been getting about immunity and breastfeeding and gave you some of the background and the science about the immune system and breastfeeding. As always, please leave questions below. I would encourage you to watch my other video about breastfeeding that I did live. It's a longer one, but if you wanna speed it up, you can put it at two times. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll catch you next Friday. Don't forget to hit subscribe.